Hey guys, Barry from Magic on Tap. Before we get started, I just want to say how much I appreciate you guys watching our videos. We put a lot of work into them. If you want to subscribe to Magic on Tap, maybe follow us, Magic underscore Untapped on Twitter, or find us, Magic Untapped on Patreon. We greatly appreciate it. Now on with the show. Magic the Gathering's original cool, Ice Age, came out in June of 1995 and marked the first set in what would eventually be known as a block, along with Homelands and Alliances. Homelands, by the way, would later be dropped in favor of Cold Snap, but we'll get to that in a future video. Back in the early 1990s, before the game of Magic the Gathering ever saw print, some of the game's original playtesters at the University of Pennsylvania thought they could take Richard Garfield's base game and make what they saw as a better version of it. Their efforts would not go unappreciated as Garfield soon would solicit those in his circle for ideas for magic expansions. Anyone? Anyone? For a variety of reasons, including concerns from Wizards of the Coast about magic players being willing to purchase reprints of already existing cards, the set saw a year's worth of delays. In fact, the set was in danger of being stuck in developmental hell because the powers that be felt it just wasn't ice agey enough. Thankfully, taking the game's basic lands and giving them a layer of snow, along with some new cards to go along with it, was enough to quell the set's critics. Ice Age takes place on Dominaria, after the events of the Brothers' War, from antiquity's fame, caused drastic climate change to take hold of the plane. Dominaria's temperature drops, and a new Ice Age sets in. Even to a guy like me, that's cold. Most of society had been lost, at least on the continent of Tessier, with little remaining other than the militaristic nation of Keldor, the barbarians of Alduvia, and the planeswalker Fraley's elvish society of Finhorn. There's also the wizarding followers of Xur, the artificer followers of Arkham Daxon, the legions in the control of the necromancer Lim Duel, and planeswalkers of Shrak and Tevish Set. Players are also treated to a menagerie of cold weather beasts such as Pygmy Allosaurus, the game's first dinosaur, Carpluskin Yeti, a darker unicorn, and Mountain Goat. Ice Age is also the set that debuted the now iconic Lagoif creature type. Despite the cold and serious tone of the set, Wizards of the Coast didn't shy away from adding some humor, typically at the expense of the set's goblins and orcs. Cards like Goblin Snowman, Goblin Ski Patrol, Orcish Conscripts, and Orcish Lumberjack all come to mind. After a couple of underwhelming magic expansions, Ice Age ticks up the power level just a bit, though things wouldn't get anywhere near the level of the original core set's Power 9. It did, however, bring the magic two cycles of dual lands, the first since the OG duels, in the form of the allied colored pain lands and depletion lands, also allied colored. The response to cards like a darker wastes and underground river were rather positive. For cards like land cap and lava tubes though, not so much. Ice Age is also the home of other new powerful cards, such as Jockle Hops, Jester's Cap, Portent, Brainstorm, and Zurin Orb. Necropotence, arguably the most powerful and easily abused card in the entire set, is still, even today, banned in all formats save for Vintage. And even then, it's restricted to one per deck. Magic Snowlands appropriately made their debut in Ice Age, Despite them fitting in perfectly with the set's theming, however, there was little actual support for them. By the way, the Snow Super Type wouldn't technically exist until more than a decade later. In fact, back in the day, running Snowlands was considered more of a liability than anything, because it opened players up to snow-covered landwalk, specialized land destruction risks, and other situational disadvantages. While staying pretty true to its source material, Ice Age had plenty of core set reprints with cards like Dark Ritual, Giant Growth, and the Circle Protection Cycle, the set did introduce one key mechanic in cumulative upkeep. Because who doesn't like continually paying more for something they've already paid for, right? The main idea here is that you play a card as normal, but in order to keep it in play you have to pay an ever-increasing tax during your upkeep in order to keep it in play. It wasn't fun. In fact, most players tended to avoid it altogether. Okay, technically there was a one other mechanic that was introduced in Ice Age beyond cumulative upkeep. The concept of cantrips made its debut in the set, though cantrips were handled much differently then than they are today. That's probably because WotC felt that a card replacing itself immediately was a tad too powerful. Cantrip cards of this era instead allowed players to draw a card during the next turn's upkeep, something that's easy to forget about, and many players indeed did. 
Tying in with Ice Age's lore, Wizards of the Coast teamed up with Armada Comics to release a four-issue miniseries based on the set that provided a good amount of backstory and context for the set. You see, kids, if you read Wizard, you'd know that it's the top story this month. As well as providing players with actual glimpses of characters that were mentioned but never saw a print in the set, such as Lem Duel, Savage Set, and Freilies. As a further bonus, the comics also came with free Magic the Gathering cards and cardboard tokens and counters. Years later, Wizards would tap into the talent of author Jeff Grubb to write a three-part series that covered the Dark as well as two of the three sets in Ice Age. These books, The Gathering Dark, The Eternal Ice, and The Shattered Alliance are considered to be among Magic's best books ever written. While not a perfect set by any means, Ice Age put the game of Magic back on solid footing after the disaster that was Fallen Empires. Duh. Could the game keep from slipping on the ice as it travels to its first new plane since Arabian Nights? We'll find out in the next video. As for Ice Age, is it one of your favorite Magic the Gathering sets? If so, let us know in the comments below. And be sure to follow Magic Untapped on YouTube and support us on Patreon for more great Magic the Gathering content.